another bonus part for this series. And in this video, we're going to create a coin shop for the game. So I'm going to start by duplicating the start scene, select start scene, control D, and we're going to call this coin shop. Open it up. Let's go and change the text. So this is going to be our shop and we'll anchor it at the top. Move it down a little bit so it won't be all the way up there. Now in the shop, I want to create some of the items. So let's start by creating an empty game object. And this is going to be our list. For this list, we have several options that we can use. So we can use horizontal layout if we're just going to have one line or you can use a grid layout if you're looking to create more than one line. For a vertical shop, you can use the vertical layout group but I'm going to use the horizontal layout inside this list. I'm going to create a UI image and let's just select a blue color. Let's rename it to blue. Now, if we duplicate this blue color, you can see that we're adding new items here, but they're all stacking from the center. So let's go and fix that. First, let's add some spacing. 20 spacing is going to be good. And uh, let's use upper center to center the children. And for rectangular transform currently is width of 100 by 100. And that's why we're saying that it's just overflowing the list. So we can hold Alt and stretch it to fit the whole thing. When we do that, you can see that it's actually not using our spacing. It's just expanding them throughout the whole space. And we can turn that off by selecting this option right there. Child force expand. And that's going to make that nice 20 spaced uh, items. So that's some of the things that we can do with horizontal layout. Vertical and grid layout also have similar functions. So if you prefer to use that, you can do that. Now let's remove the other ones and we need to add some more information here. For instance, how much this upgrade costs. So what I'm going to do is actually go to my level, level one and inside canvas, I'm going to copy this UI coin game object. Now let's go back to our coin shop and paste that in and put it in our UI background. And that displays the current count of coins. So we're just reusing what we already have created. Now let's also paste the same thing inside of our blue skin. Let's move it inside here and let's align it to bottom right, move it down a little and we can set the scale to 0.7. Let's go to our text and change to the price of the skin. So we can say it's going to cost us 10 coins and this text has a script machine attached to it. And it's the one that we use to update the count of coins. We're not going to use it here. So let's actually remove it. And now we can select this game object blue and add a script machine here. Let's create a new graph and we'll call it item graph. And before we start creating the graph, we'll need some variables for this object. One of them is going to be an ID and this is going to be just a unique value per item. So we can use it for saving as the state of our purchase. Let's add that. And for this, we're just going to use a string. I'm just going to call it blue. And another one is going to be our color. So let's add color and let's find a color type. We'll use the same color that we have here. We'll need another variable for our price. So let's add that price and it's going to be an integer, set it to 10. And for the last variable, we need the game object that has the text. So we can actually change that value and I'll just call it price text. Type game object and just drag text here. So those are going to be our variables. Let's go to edit graph and in our added graph, if we select object, we can see all these variables available for us. So now in this graph on start, we need to configure our item and that is setting the correct color and price. So let's start with color. Let's say image set color right there and the image is currently attached to this game object so we can just drag the color that we have here and pass it as the value next thing is to set text so let's use set text and for the text value we can pass the price but we'll have to convert it from integer to string pass it in like that and also our text is actually in another game object and that's where we need to use this game object that we have saved as a variable to pass it in so with this setup right now, what we can do is actually create a couple more items and let's change the color of them. So let's say this one's going to be orange price 20. Then the next one is going to be green and let's say 25. Also, we'll need to change the ID. We're going to use it later, but let's just change it right away. Orange and let's set red. 
and red is going to be our default color. So we'll set the value to zero. I'm going to rename the game objects as well. So let's say red. The values for the variables are set, but the colors and the price has not changed. And we can actually go through and change it manually. But if we click play, the graph that we just created should change the values into the correct ones. And there you go. Now you can see that we have red price of zero, blue price of 10 and so on. So that part of a script is working correctly. And now let's create the purchasing logic. So let's go to one of these graphs. And in here, let's create a listener for on pointer click. The first thing we'll do is check if we have enough coins to make the purchase. So right here, I have a saved variable coins, and we can use that and check if this value is greater or equal to the price of our skin. So let's use an if statement here, connect that Boolean value. If we have enough coins, then we want to continue with our purchase. And in here, what we'll have to do is get our coins count and subtract the price of that skin. That value will have to save it. So holding Alt down, we can switch to set a variable and let's connect it on true. And this can be our new value for our coins. Now, after this, we want to mark this skin to be purchased. And for that, we'll be saving the state. But before we do that, let's take a look at how we can change the skin of the player. What I'm going to do is actually use a saved variable. So let's go inside here and let's add a new variable. I'll just call it player skin. Click add for the type. In our case, we can just use the color because that's the only thing that we're changing in the skin is the color. But if you're actually modifying the mesh or if the player skin is more complex, then you might even want to use a game object instead. But the color is going to work fine for us. So the default color of my player is going to be red. And now after I have purchased a new skin, I want to change this color to the color that I have just purchased. So holding L down, drag and drop it here. And after we have made that purchase, we can connect it right there. And for the value, we can go to our object and drag the color from here and connect it like this. So that's going to save the skin setting for us. And now we have to go to our player prefab right here and let's go edit the graph inside this graph. I want to change the color of my player. So let's do that on start. You can go to save variables, pull the color that we have here and just look for material set color. So we're going to use this right here. And for material, we need to pass in the material of our mesh renderer. So let's look for mesh render, get material right there. And for the color, we're going to use the color that we have saved. And now to test this, first, we'll need to go to our UI background. And inside here, we still have the graph of loading the first index. I'm going to actually remove it from here remove this component in our UI. We need a way to actually start the game after we have selected the right skin and we can do that with adding another button. But what I'm going to do is actually after we have clicked on one of these squares and we have selected the skin, I'm going to start the game to do that. We can go back to our added graph and right here after we set the player skin, we can paste the load scene unit that we used to start the game and that should be all ready for us to test it out. Here is our shop. We currently have 111 coins. If I click on this blue skin, you can see that the purchase was made and our player skin is now blue. So let's go back and click play again. And this time let's try the green skin. Click on that. Our coin count got subtracted and now we have the green skin. But currently, since we're not saving the state, each time we go to the shop, we have to purchase the skin again. If I want to play the green skin, you can see that I'm being charged again that 25 coins. So that is where we need to actually save the state that we have purchased the skin. So we don't have to purchase it again. For that, we'll go back to our graph. And after we make this purchase, we want to flag this item as a purchased item. To do that, we're going to use a saved variable again. So after we've saved the coins, we're going to save another variable. But for the variable name of this unit, what we're going to do is actually use the ID that we've created for this item. So just drag that in here, pass it in as the name and that will use the unique ID that we need to create for each item to save the state of this item for the value. I'm going to actually use a Boolean. So let's select that 
and if we have purchased it just set it to true after that is successful we can just go back to selecting this item and that is the logic for that now we want to use this saved state to change what happens when we click on that item so on click before we go into checking if we have enough coins we first want to check if we have purchased this item or not so let's add that logic here add another if statement and what we're checking here is if we have a saved variable with the id that is set to true so let's look for get saved variable and for the name we're going to pass the id and pass the value inside here but there is one problem with this we don't create variables for the items that haven't been purchased yet and if we just leave it like that it's actually going to be thrown an error and it's because we're trying to get a boolean value from an object that does not exist so to avoid that get variable has an option the fallback and for the fallback we can pass in a default value that we want to use if that variable does not exist and the default value is going to be a boolean set false and this will make sure that we don't get that error now if we already purchased this item on click we just want to select the skin so we can reuse the same logic and connect it right here but if it's false then we want to actually attempt purchasing it and we can pass it here so let's actually group this right here say this is change skin and this is going to be buy skin and at the top this is going to be our config now we have a default color that we don't have to actually pay any coins for what we can do is actually go to saved and add that as an initial value so let's just say red and add a boolean type and say that we have it purchased but if we run it you can see that even though we have the skins marked as purchased we're still displaying that price so what we can do is add one more thing in our configurations so let's reuse these units right here that is checking if we have purchased this item or not Control d to duplicate it and just move it here if we have this item marked as purchased we want to hide that price we can use set active to false and for the game object we want to get the parent of the text which is the ui coin we have the variable for price text and we can just say get parent and pass that as the game object and now if we click play we no longer see the price displayed for the item that we have purchased so let's try it out on another skin so let's purchase the green one again we have subtracted those coins and a green is selected if we go back to the shop now you can see that the price is no longer displayed and if we click on it we select the green skin but the price is actually not changing let's purchase the orange one and now the orange one is selected and now that we have six coins if we try to purchase the blue one nothing happens because it can go through the purchasing process because we don't have enough coins now the next step would be displaying some errors if you don't have any coins or having the coins marked in red there's lots of options that you can create and it will be unique to how you want your shop to look like also you would need to add some buttons so that you can go inside the shop from the game and be able to purchase the skin and if you watch this series you have all the information that is needed to actually create those things so i'm not going to be making that in this video but hopefully i gave you enough information for you to start your own coin shop system don't forget to click on the like button and i'll see you in the next video